Hi, welcome to the urinary system. <laughs> we are going to be talking about some of the structures that are required for the urinary system to perform. My name is Dr. J. Students usually call me Dr. J because I'm that good of a basketball player. No, not really. But uh, let's go on and look at the first structures for the urinary system. So the main roles go to the kidneys. So we have one on each side. That's why typically a person can actually survive with just one kidney. And if you notice, one is higher, slightly higher than the other one, okay? That's because the liver, which we have taken out, is mostly on the right side, okay? And this part right here, we can actually take this out. And we will look at this much closely later on, okay? So this area is where your urine is actually formed and once the urine is formed it goes right into the renal pelvis right here and then it goes down to the ureter, ureter right so each one has a ureter and then or each side each kidney will have a dedicated renal pelvis and a ureter and the ureter will eventually go down here now you can't see the urinary bladder just yet so i'm going to pull out this section right here and this is apparently a female. This is the uterus of the female. And as we open it up, okay, so this is, let me hold it. This is the uterus, as we mentioned. This is the urinary bladder, okay? It's, if you notice, it's right underneath anterior, basically anterior to the um, uterus. So when the pregnant woman has a larger uterus, of course, that's why she would now have to go to the bathroom more often. And then <clears throat> the urinary bladder is basically the temporary storage of the urine, and then eventually it will go down through the urethra. So again, since this is a female, the urethra is much shorter compared to for, for males. And because of that, females tend to have urinary tract infection more often, okay? All right, so let's move to this section right here. This is a large model of a sagittal, uh, coronally cut um, kidney, okay? So the kidney has this outer covering called the capsule, okay? And this right here is the cortex, okay? So that's the outer part. And then these sections right here the triangular looking uh, structures are called the renal pyramids, okay? Now, when you see the renal, renal pyramids, you know that you're already in the inner part of the kidney, which is the medulla. And this is a highly vascularized structure because all the blood will have to go through here to be cleansed, okay? So you see the renal artery coming in here, and then the blood will go in here to get filtered and to get um, reabsorption and secretion happening or going on. And then, so those are basically the three processes that have to happen before the final product of urine is made. And if you magnify this, so remember how we have those structures that are triangular, the renal pyramid. So if you were to cut a section of that, say cutting a slice out of this uh, cake, I usually tell my students this part right here looks like chocolate ganache. That's like the renal <laughs> the covering over it, okay? But so we took a slice of that, and now we have this here. So this is a super magnified version, okay? And this section, as I mentioned, is the cortex, and this is the medulla, okay? So we're looking at several structures here that are very important for your information, okay? This part right here is the highly magnified view of this section, okay? So this, right here, you see the red structures here? So those are the renal, um, renal artery branches. And then eventually this blood vessel will give, so this is this right here, this is called the afferent arterial. This brings blood to the glomerular capsule here, right? So this, there's this glomerulus, this is the glomerulus right here. This is the ball of capillaries. And so when blood goes in through here, Okay, the pressure of the blood in here will cause some liquid to go out. That's the first process, that's called filtration. And it happens right here in the glomerulus. Once the liquid goes out, it's now called filtrate. So that's potential P, 
Okay, it's not the final product yet, but it could potentially be part of the P. And the filtrate will be found in this space called the glomerular space, okay, or Bowman space. And this is a glomerular capsule or Bowman's capsule. Once the filtrate is out here, okay, now the blood will continue flowing through the blood vessels, but the filtrate will eventually go through the next portion, which you find over here, okay? So you have convolutions here, a twisting, kind of twist and turn, so that's why it call, it's called the proximal convoluted tubule, okay? The proximal convoluted tubule is the site of most of reabsorption. Now that's the second part of the formation of the second process for forming the pea. So first it was the filtration happening here, and now it's the reabsorption. So most of what we filtered actually gets reabsorbed right after, and that happens here in the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the descending limb of the loop of Henle, and then this is the nephron loop, and you have the, if you have a descending, you're gonna have an ascending limb of the loop of Henle, and then you have the distal convoluted tubule, this right here is the most common site of the last of the three processes, which is called secretion. So secretion is the opposite of reabsorption. In reabsorption, you took back some of the materials that you filtered. In secretion, you're dumping some of the materials that are still in the blood that you actually want to get rid of. So that part is mostly taking place in the distal convoluted tubule. The last portion here is your collecting duct. This is where you form the final product. This is where the final product goes through. And if you follow, it goes all the way down here, okay? Look right here. So this is pretty much this. So now when the final product, which is the urine, is now ending up right here, this is the minor calyx. Each minor calyx will lead to a major calyx each major calyx goes into the renal pelvis, okay? And then the final urine goes all the way down through the ureter, and then eventually the urinary bladder, and then the urethra. Now, fun fact, right? You probably know someone who may have had a kidney stone. This is, um, picture, I mean, it's an actual kidney stone that was extracted, okay? Right here. So uh, before we end this, just a quick um, story about kidney stones. Um, in, uh, when I was an intern in med school, one of the patients that I was able to assist in the operation of was a staghorn calculus. So a staghorn calculus is kidney stone that is super large, okay? So it was as big as the kidney, and it's, if you know what a ginger looks like, it looked pretty much like that, but with this consistency. So that was one of the most memorable patients that I've been able to handle, that I've had the opportunity of assisting in the surgery for. So that ends our piece here about the anatomy of the urinary system structures.